Today I'm going to show you how to make a pop art portrait Photoshop project. For my portrait, I'm going to use these doves. First thing I'm going to do is crop the image. So in the toolbox, the fifth image down, I'm going to grab the crop tool and click and drag a crop around this image. And if you don't get the crop perfect the first time, that's okay because you can actually continue to move the handles. Once you get it to the way you want it, go ahead and click on the check mark in the upper right hand corner and that will get rid of the extra space that you didn't want. So now in the layers panel, I'm going to click the word layers and I need to change this from a background into a layer. You can see right now it says background and it has a little padlock on it. It's really easy to convert it. All you need to do is double click it and you'll get this box that says layer zero. Then you click OK. So now when you look over in the layers panel, you can see that it says layer instead of background and the padlock is gone. That's what you need. Now um, for the pop art portrait, we need four copies of this all in one document. So the way that I'm going to do that is to increase the canvas size. Um, first of all, I'm going to go to image, image size, and I'm going to make the birds um, approximately four inches wide because I want to print it on an eight and a half by 11 inch paper and that's the size that will fit onto that paper. So what I'm going to do is unclick the resample button. I'm going to change the resolution to 300. Now I'm going to re-click the resample button. You'll see what that did is it shrank the image, but I need to shrink it a little bit more. So I'm going to highlight the width and I'm going to put it on 4. Now the bottom number, the height, you, you can't control that. So whatever number you put on the width, the height will automatically change because Photoshop is making it proportionate. So now I'm going to um, click OK. And now my image is 4 inches wide and it is resolution of 300, which is a good resolution for printing. So now I'm going to go to image, canvas size. And I'm going to change this from inches to percent and I'm going to make it 200% width and 200% height. And you can use this anchor feature down here if you want to. It's not absolutely mandatory. But if I click, whoops, wrong one. Let's click this upper left-hand corner box. So what this means is it's going to put the picture of the dove in this corner, and it's going to put the extra space around it where the arrows are pointing. So I'm going to click OK. And you can see that it has given me the dub image and then space to put three more copies of it around the edge. So what I'm going to do is click on the move tool over here on the side and hover the move tool over the doves. If I hold down alt on the keyboard, watch what happens to the cursor. It turns into a double cursor, a black cursor with a white cursor behind it. So holding down alt, I'm going to click and drag a dove copy over to the side and let go. I'm going to use my arrow keys and move that over till it fits exactly in the spot. Alright, now I'm going to hold down Alt again and drag another copy down here in this corner. and move it into place and let go of Alt. Now I'm going to hold Alt down one more time and drag one more copy over to the side. So now I have my four, my four images. And if you look over here in the Layers panel, you can see where all four of them are at. So what we're going to do now is add the color to this. So I'm going to click on Layer 0, which is the bottom layer, and I'm going to go to Adjustments. And here on the bottom row, the second to the last one, is Gradient Map. We have had a Gradient Map project before, so you may be familiar with 
how the gradient map works. So I'm going to click that button and I get this gradient map adjustment layer. You can see what happened to the dove. It turned black and white. That's because the default here is black and white. So I'm going to pop this menu open and I'm going to click um, this one. So I like the way that looks. Um, I'm going to click right on this large colored bar right here, double click it, and I can get more options. So if I wanted more of a particular color, I could move these sliders around to change what it looks like. I actually like the way it looks, so I'm going to click OK. Now let's go ahead and look at our layers panel and we can see that this gradient map is above layer 0. Now for the first layer, we're not going to have any problems with the way that looks, but when we get to the other layers, these three, it's going to cause a little bit of a problem to have gradient maps on top of one another, and I'll show you why in just a minute. So now I'm going to click the next layer up from the bottom, and I'm going to go back to Adjustments, I'm going to go back to Gradient Map, and again it went to the default black and white. Look what happened to my first picture. It changed it, and I, and I don't like the way that looks. So I'm going to go ahead and adjust this second dove portrait, and then we'll fix that first one so we can get the original colors back. So I'm going to pop open this menu, and let's say I like this one. That looks pretty good. I can pop this open and make some changes if I want to, move these sliders around to get more of different colors if you want. I'm going to click OK. Now I'm going to show you how to fix this so it goes back to the original. So I'm going to go back to Layers, Tab, and on the second gradient that I made, I'm going to hover the cursor right between the layers, so right where this blue and gray line meets. I'm going to hold down Alt. Can you see that funny cursor? It's the two overlapping circles. What that's going to do is make a, uh, a mask. So when I click, you can see, oh, let me try that again. You can see that now there's a little arrow on the gradient map adjustment layer that's pointing down to layer zero copy. If you look over here, you can see that fixed my problem. So it associated that gradient map only with the layer that it, the arrow is pointing to. So let's go ahead and go to the third copy. And I'm going to go to adjustments and again click gradient map. And I'm going to, um, let's say I'll click this one. And I kind of like the colors, but I'm going to double click it here. And let's say I want to add some green to it. So right here, I'm going to click in this gray area to get a stop. And it made it black. So I'm going to double click the little black part. And now I can take this slider and I want to get some green. So how about how about this green? Oh no, that's too bright. Let's get maybe a kind of a blue green. I like that better. So now that I have my blue green and I'm looking at this one down here at the bottom, I can move this slider around to get different amounts. I, I want some more I want some more yellow. So I'm going to move this slider so that I can get some more yellow in those doves. And now I want some more blue. So I'm going to move the slider so that I can get some more blue. Okay, I think that looks pretty good. So I'm going to click OK. But I can see that this has messed up my first two gradient maps. So I need to fix that. I'm going to go to Layers and hover the cursor between gradient map 3 and the layer below it, hold down Alt on the keyboard, and I get that funny looking symbol with the two overlapping circles. I'm going to click, and that's going to create a layer mask, and that worked great. So I have my other colors back, and it looks good. Now I'm going to go to my last one, the top 
layer, go to adjustments, and choose my gradient map, and pop this menu open, and I like this one on the end with the, with the purple and the orange in it. So now I'm gonna go back to layers, Hover the cursor between the layers, right where the blue and the gray meet. Hold down Alt on the keyboard and click. And now I've made a layer mask and this looks fantastic. So I'm going to click Control Zero on the keyboard and that's gonna make the image fill the whole screen. And um, I think this turned out really nice. I like the colors and I'm gonna Go ahead and save it, and then I'm going to save one as a JPEG and put it onto my uh, website. That's it for now.